sleep and forget it. Stay tuned for your local news next on ABC. Official Powerball drawing is on the air. Hope you have a ticket tonight. $45.4 million. That's our estimated jackpot. And now the multiplier for tonight, if you bought the power play, will be number two. Multiplier is two. And if you're looking for a unique gift idea, we recommend you get on the website, Powerball.com. Some great ideas, including Powerball logo gifts. Now here are your numbers. Good luck. 46, followed by 15, followed by 26. Check those tickets carefully. Now there's number 25. Powerball still to come. The last white ball, 13. And here we go with 45.4 million on the line. Powerball is 28. 28 the Powerball and multiplier is two. Thanks for playing. Have a safe, happy holiday weekend. Good night. Are you ready? Really ready? Mark your calendars. One, two, three. A brand new season of Oprah. Go, Oprah. You, Oprah. Good to see you, Tyler. favorites on classical guitar on the next Panorama. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Sally Ann Mosey, Phil Andrews, and Rob Jennings. Unlike Charlie, Hurricane Francis is painfully slow. It has been churning all day just off the Florida coast, moving at only five miles an hour. More time for the hurricane force winds to lash the Gold Coast. More time for residents hunkered down in homes and shelters to ride it out and endure a hurricane as large as the state of Texas. Saturday night, the big story in Action News is the eye of Hurricane Francis churning very close to landfall in Florida. The highest winds have not yet hit, but Francis is pounding Florida's east coast. Intense winds and rain have raped coastal communities, leaving a trail of destruction. About two million people tonight are without electricity. Power lines like this one have been knocked down, trees uprooted. Boats have been battered around, and this is only the beginning. Forecasters say the worst is yet to come, with the center of the storm hovering just off the Atlantic coast, waiting to pounce. Action News reporter John Rollins is north of the expected landfall. He's joining us live tonight from New Smyrna Beach. Are conditions getting worse there, John? To be sure, it's been a rough night so far, Robin. As you say, we're told that uh, really the most damaging winds are going to probably hit here in the next hour or two. Right now, we've had sustained winds here at New Smyrna Beach of about 40 to 50 miles an hour. That's about half of what they have down at Fort Pierce, where they think the eye of the storm will probably pass over there in the next hour or so. Now, as you say, like Hurricane Charlie a couple of weeks ago sort of sprinted across this state, it looks as if uh, Francis is going to be something of a marathon or she is moving very slowly. And what experts say is she could hammer and drench this state for at least the next 24 hours. The lumbering storm began to really punish the Sunshine State Saturday afternoon. One of the first victims, this gas station canopy in Dade County, came tumbling down. Elsewhere, trees fell, power lines snapped, and homes suffered. At unprotected coastal marinas, high winds and high waters battered and swamped boats. It's estimated almost three million residents evacuated before the storm hit, but some decided to board it up and ride it out. One of them, New Smyrna Beach resident Jim Spencer, moved these big flower pots into his garage so they wouldn't become airborne. Next to the flower is a generator and chainsaw. Yesterday and the day before, we boarded up about nine houses. Okay. And, um, Pretty much got everybody secure. Probably on this block, there's at least seven families that are staying. Okay. And uh, as I rode around this morning, riding, taking my dogs out for a walk, they there's I'd say a third of the island is it's probably here still. Tony Lembo and his family also decided to stay put under the blue tarp, a generator. Pour it up and let it go. I got gas. I'm all set. Looters come. I got my gun. All set. We're back live right now. Uh, that's not an isolated uh, issue down here with some 
two million, two and a half million people out of their homes. There is concern about looting. There's also concern about how many of those people are going to be able to go back to their homes, depending on the damage. It could be people will be in uh, shelters for some time to come. Governor Bush, Governor Jeb Bush said today that they have trucks and crews standing by outside of the storm area. Even now, trucks with some 200 trucks worth of refrigerated trucks with ice in them in an effort as to get them in here as soon as this storm blows over, which, as we say, could take another 24 hours or so. They also say they have the means to deliver something like a million meals a day to people who they figure will be out of their homes for some time. Live in New Severna Beach, John Rollins, Channel 6, Action News. Rob? Thank you very much, John. Before setting its sights on Florida, Francis battered the Bahamas. The hurricane cut a deadly path through the island chain. Roaring winds snapped trees, shattered windows, and tore apart homes. At least two people are known dead in the Bahamas. Sally Ann Mosey's been keeping a very close watch on Francis. She joins us now with the very latest on the hurricane. Sally Ann? Well, the western eyewall of the hurricane, Rob, now is making landfall. Take a look at Storm Tracker 6 Live. And you see the western eye of the storm is moving toward the Florida area. You can see, again, the western eyewall of the hurricane now making landfall. You're seeing it here live on Storm Tracker 6. All right, let me give you the latest statistics. This just in from the National Hurricane Center. 35 miles northeast of West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, it's expected to make landfall the center of the storm, the actual eye, at Fort Pierce. That is between West Palm Beach and Vero Beach. You can see it's still moving very slowly, and the problem with that is large amounts of rain. We're talking 10 to 20 inches as it moves to the west-northwest at 5 miles an hour. The wind speeds at 105 miles an hour with wind gusts near 125 miles an hour. The projected path, you can see right now, again, the western eye wall of the hurricane is making some landfall, but the center will be making it in the next couple of hours. The winds and rainfall will continue to increase tonight and Sunday with winds gusting between 60 and 80 miles an hour. Again, that potential rainfall at 10 to, to 20 inches. It should be moving up uh, inland areas right through Tuesday and Wednesday. What that means for the Jersey Shore and the Delaware beaches, first of all, overnight tonight, rough surf, rip currents. We're going to see those heightening waves by tomorrow. More of the same, but increasing the waves, especially the south-facing beaches. You could see wells swells six to eight feet, so we'll continue to track it as it moves in land and moves upward. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Sally Ann. Let's switch now to uh, Action News reporter Sarah Bloomquist live in Ocean City, where the surf is up some, but folks are really enjoying this long Labor Day weekend. Hi, Sarah. Hello there, Rob. You're right. The surf was up, then the sun went down. Tonight it is all about the boardwalk and making some lasting memories before summer officially comes to an end. on a beautiful summer night, and many stayed at the beach a bit later to soak up what's left of the season. I'm a teacher, and uh, this, is, this is it. This is it, so we're trying to suck up every last minute of the beach, because we love the beach, and it's kind of sad. Those who stayed late watched the waves get even bigger. A week of rough surf kept the beach patrol busy. Our rip current's been picking up a lot. Uh, yesterday alone, we went on about six or seven rescues, and uh, people have been getting a little bit of trouble due to the current and the rip current and the big waves, but uh, nothing we can't handle. Billy Freitag rode the big waves in his brand new kayak. Looks a little rough out there, huh? Yeah, it's really rough. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, it... Oh, well, the waves are big, and uh, I don't know, it's really hard to stay out there for a long period of time. So then they came in from the beach, put on their sweatshirts, and took what for many will be the last stroll along the boardwalk before it's time to go back to school. I'm ready for them to go back if you're about to ask me about school. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, yes, I'm ready to go home now. <laughs> Not yet. Still the rest of the weekend to go before we say so long to the official summer season. Got to come down to the boardwalk, <laughs> have a little pizza, enjoy the night. It's nice out, so... Very nice out, and as the evening hours did wear on, the waves did get a bit bigger, so it will be interesting to see as Labor Day weekend wears on whether or not Hurricane Francis has any dramatic effect here at the Jersey Shore. Live in Ocean City tonight, I'm Sarah Bloomquist, Channel 6 Action News. Rob? Thanks, Sarah. Stay tuned to Action News at 6 tomorrow morning, and Good Morning America Sunday for the very latest on Hurricane Francis. Also remember, Action News reporter John Rollins will be continuing his live reports from Florida tomorrow. Now, officials say somebody released mace in a crowded Wendy's restaurant in northeast Philadelphia today. Forty-one people had to go to hospitals 
Action News reporter Michelle McCormack is live at Cotman and Bustleton with the rest of the story. Michelle? Well, Rob, still no answers as to how this chemical, mace, was released inside this restaurant shortly after lunchtime. But as you can see behind me, the restaurant has cleaned up, aired out. Staffers have reopened the drive through window, hoping to move on after one stressful day. The danger is, is that we don't know what we're facing. When fire and police responded to the emergency call at the Wendy's restaurant near the Roosevelt Mall, they weren't sure what they were dealing with. All they knew is that more than 40 people, both employees and customers, were nauseous and having trouble breathing. We noticed that there was a lot of coughing going on in the restaurant. Your eyes are watering and then you just couldn't stop coughing and you're coughing and you feel like you're more or less like tightening up and you're coughing because you really can't breathe. So we got up and we walked out. <laughs> And my mom started coughing when she got outside the vestibule in the restaurant. And as I was out the front door, I started choking up. So then when we got outside, a lot of the little kids, I guess that weren't able to hold their food down, just started vomiting. 41 people in all wound up being transported to the hospital where doctors determined that they had been exposed to mace. Investigators with the city's counterterrorism unit believe the initial point of contact was at the drive through where a female worker was the first to be overcome. But trace amounts of mace showed up in the dining area as well. Surveillance tapes have yielded no clues as to whether someone wandered the restaurant spraying the chemical. To see hazmat crews in their full gear certainly was an unnerving sight, but Philadelphia's fire department says in this day and age, you can never downplay a situation. We institute the incident command system. We follow our standard operating procedures. None of our guys get hurt. People get handled very quickly and move to where they can be helped. Now, no one is calling this an act of terrorism, but it is a serious offense to release a chemical spray in a habited area. Well, that is considered aggravated assault. Live in Northeast Philadelphia, Michelle McCormack, Channel 6 Action News. Rob. Thank you, Michelle. Police in Chester are now saying that a senseless dispute over the care of a little girl led to a deadly shootout. Chopper 6 over the 1100 block of Remington Street just after midday. Police tell us three men shot it out down there. Two were killed on the street. A third later died at the hospital. Investigators say one victim had a daughter with another victim's sister. The bloodshed was over who would care for the little girl while her mother was working. A house fire has claimed the life of a man in Wilmington, Delaware tonight. Flames engulfed the home in the 1300 block of Cedar Street just before 9 p.m. Firefighters had it out in about a half hour. Too late, though, to save a man inside. The man's name is being withheld, and Wilmington fire officials are searching for the cause of this one. A traffic nightmare tonight for people on I-95. An accident here between this truck, this tanker truck, and a pickup truck closed northbound I-95 in Holmesburg for several hours tonight. This is between Cotman and Academy Roads. It happened about 6 p.m. Nobody was hurt, but northbound I-95 was closed for about three hours. And southbound traffic was very slow, even jammed for miles. Police in Hatton Township, New Jersey, saying a joyride in this stolen Jeep ended in this crash on northbound Route 130 tonight. An officer in Brooklawn tried to stop the Jeep when he saw it driving erratically. The 13-year-old boy at the wheel 13 years old, led police on the chase and lost control, smashed into a concrete wall and a telephone pole. The boy is critical but stable. A second teen was treated for less serious injuries. A third passenger hightailed it on foot after the accident. Still to come on Action News tonight, Teresa Hines Carey is rushed to an Iowa hospital tonight. Bill Cosby drums up support at a local scholarship fundraiser. Phil Andrews has highlights of a stellar night for the Phillies and college football. Sally Ann returns with AccuWeather and more on Hurricane Francis when Action News continues. Tony and I are asking, will you help a student make the grade by donating a book for children ages 5 to 12? From now until September 10th, bring your gently used or new books to any of these sovereign bank branches you see on your screen. Your books will be delivered to school children all over Philadelphia. And for more information, log on to abcnews.com or wpvi.com. Good morning, America. 6ABC and Sovereign Bank teaming up for Book Drive America. Let's go. We can do this. Let's do it.
If you see news happening, call the Action News tip line toll-free at 866-NEWS-6 or contact us online at WPVI.com. This is the one sales event you've almost missed. The Ford Authorized Clearance ends Labor Day weekend. This is the one event where you can get America's best small SUV, Ford Escape, for only $239 a month for 24 months. The one event with one of Car and Driver's 10 best, Ford Focus, for only $199 a month. The Ford Authorized Clearance ends Labor Day weekend. Don't let this one opportunity pass you by. Get to your Quality Plus Ford dealer now. Well, wait a minute. Forty-two ninety-five a month for Comcast Internet Access. And that doesn't include MSN Premium with all those cool features? You're kidding. <gasps> Let's try that again with Verizon. So, DSL is only $29.95 a month? Wow, that's 13 bucks a month less than cable. And that includes MSN Premium with all those features? Perfect. Verizon Online DSL. Now that's an easy call. Verizon. Circuit City's the place to save on a huge selection of the latest computers. Hurry in today and save $300 on this deluxe eMachines computer package. It's loaded with an AMD Athlon XP3000 processor, 17-inch flat screen monitor, DVD burner, and CD-ROM drive, plus a Lexmark color printer, all for just $599.99 after mail-in rebates. Now through Saturday at Circuit City. Former President Clinton undergoes bypass surgery early next week. Today, Senator Hillary Clinton returned to the New York hospital where her husband's been since yesterday after doctors detected blocked arteries. Clinton blames genetics for his situation, but also says his love of fast food caught up to him despite jogging and his recent dieting. Vice President Cheney, a veteran of quadruple bypass surgery, called Mr. Clinton today to wish him luck. Teresa Hines Carey, wife of Democratic presidential candidate John Kerry, hospitalized briefly in Mason City, Iowa late today for a stomach ailment. As a precaution, Mrs. Hines Carey underwent a series of routine tests and was released. She later headed to her home in Pittsburgh tonight as planned. President Bush finished his post-convention tour where he started in Pennsylvania before returning to the White House. Today in Erie, he said the economic recovery is real thanks to his policies. Earlier, the president campaigned in another key state, Ohio, as did John Kerry, where in Akron today, he said the record increase in Medicare premiums for doctor visits is another failed promise from the Bush administration. A lot of neighborhoods are holding block parties this holiday weekend, but folks in the 1300 block of 29th Street in North Philadelphia continued their special tradition today. It was their 26th annual Labor Day block party, 26th annual, and it's an event that condemns violence and reinforces community spirit, and in this election year, urge residents to vote and let their voices be heard. Hey, Mr. Opportunity here. Now, listen up. I've got some great news for all you outdoor rugged types. Honda is having a clearance. And that means you can lease the multi-purpose Honda Pilot at a price that'll make the great outdoors seem very appealing. Just remember, the call of the open road is only open for so long, if you get my meaning. The 2004 Honda Clearance. You wait, you're late. Lease an eight-passenger Honda Pilot EX for $2.99 a month for 36 months at where? Yeah, your Honda dealer. I'm Mr. Opportunity, and I am still knocking. This Labor Day weekend, come to Lowe's for great values. Now get free propane when you buy this Charbroil gas grill with tank included for only $99. And now all 4-inch potted garden mums are only 78 cents each. Use your Lowe's card store-wide and pay nothing for 12 months on purchases of $299 or more. And Lowe's low price guarantee means you can't buy it for less anywhere. Lowe's, improving home improvement. This Labor Day week, the Northeast's largest furniture retailer presents a powerful offer. It's Raymore and Flanagan's most powerful offer, with savings store-wide in every department, including world-famous brand names. Combine that with incredible financing. Pay no interest till 2007, not 2005, not 2006, but interest-free till 2007. All with delivery in three days or less. Don't miss Raymore and Flanagan's most powerful offer. Now through 9 p.m. Labor Day. It accelerates faster than a Porsche Boxster. Has more ground clearance than a BMW X5. And 
cost $12,000 less than an Audi All-Road. It is the all-new 250-horsepower all-wheel drive Subaru Outback. Somewhere in Germany, an engineer weeps. Visit your Subaru dealer for 2.9% APR for 63 months on every 2005 Subaru. I have been tricked, and somebody's going to come up here and play these things. Well, that's the cause today at the Cherry Hill Hilton, reluctant to play the drums during the 14th annual Tony Williams Scholarship Jazz Fest. But of course, he never misses a beat when it comes to helping a good cause. Bill Cosby, the one and only. Weather's very nice here. Terrible down south. In fact, it finally hit, and it's it's ferocious. The western portions of the actual storm are now making landfall now, but the actual eye of the storm not there quite yet. And you can see it right here on Storm Tracker Six. You know what I'm talking about. The western eye wall now starting to make landfall, but the actual eye itself has a couple of hours because you know what? This is a very slow-moving hurricane, and you can see there on Storm Tracker Six the bands of rain that are going to continue to be the problem especially with the rain and the slow movement, the wind gusts. It's going to be a very tough 24 hours in the Florida area. Okay, let me give you the latest stats on Hurricane Francis. Category 2, over the last couple of hours, the actual center of the storm seemed to lose pressure, so there was a thought it could actually strengthen. But now that it's making landfall, this is it, Category 2. It is 35 miles northeast of West Palm Beach, Florida. It's expected to make landfall the center now around Fort Pierce, which is right between West Palm Beach and Vero Beach. The movement still very slow to the west-northwest at 5 miles an hour. The maximum sustained wind speeds 105 miles an hour. The gusts near 125, so overnight tonight it's going to be very rough throughout the Florida area. And let me give you the path that's expected as we go through the next 24 and several days ahead. You can see that right now it continues to swirl and continues to move to the east as it goes through the central Florida area. It'll start to move up through the Mississippi Valley area. What that means for the Jersey Shore and the Delaware beaches is this. Overnight tonight, we're looking at rough surf. The rip currents are going to be tough. We're looking at heightening waves. And then during the day tomorrow, more of the same, but the waves will increase yet again. Sea Isle City reporting swells this afternoon between 5 and 6 feet. So really depends on where you are, especially the south-facing beaches. The surfers know what I'm talking about. Swells expected there tomorrow between 6 and 8 foot. And then we're expecting even increased swells by Monday. Okay, Satellite 6 and Action Radar is going to show you not only are we dealing with uh, infrared satellite inventory of what's happening with the hurricane, but we also have a tropical storm. Ivan, way out there. It's expected to become a hurricane as it moves through the Antilles, but this is not going to present a problem for the holiday weekend or several days ahead. So let's get to what's going to affect us on the mainland U.S. as we go through the next few days. First, we're looking at not only the moisture from the hurricane going to cross Florida, may end up in the Gulf and then pull itself up, we also have a trough that's to our west. It could actually pick up the moisture by later in the week, and that could bring us very wet weather, maybe Wednesday, Thursday. But for tomorrow, cool air is going to come down with a backdoor cold front. You could see the current temperatures with the ridge of warm air around Atlanta, 74 currently, 77 in New York, but the cooler air, Bangor, 54, and that's what we're looking at, cooler air moving in. Not that cold, though, for tonight. It's going to be partly cloudy. We're looking at some fog. High pressure still in control dropping down to 66 degrees. Then tomorrow is going to be a cooler day than today. Today we topped out at 85. Tomorrow, 78 clouds and sun mixed together. Breezy conditions with the winds out of the east. The call from AccuWeather is fine here, but ferocious in Florida for the holiday weekend. 62 right now up in the Poconos. It's 68 in Allentown, 72 in Trenton, 67 in Atlantic City, 66 Wildwood, 70 Dover, 71 in Wilmington. Our low is 68, our high again, 85 degrees, the average is 80 in Center City right now. It's 73 as well as the Northeast, 72 in Camden and outside the station, 74 at the airport. Sky 6 is live, we go down the shore. Folks are still enjoying the holiday weekend. 74, the humidity at 71, barometer is rising at 30.16, the winds are calm. The ocean temperature is 75. The exclusive AccuWeather 5 day forecast for tonight, partly cloudy conditions dropping down to 66 tomorrow. We start off with a lot of clouds around, maybe some low-level fog, some limited sun during the day.
78 the high temperature. Then during the day on Monday, the actual Labor Day holiday, nice day, 78 degrees. By Tuesday, clouds and sunshine, 80 degrees, maybe a shower. And then it all depends on the track of the hurricane, how wet we end up being for Wednesday and Thursday. But we are calling for rain, 80 degrees on Wednesday and on Thursday, 78 degrees. So it is going to be wet later on, but the actual holiday weekend is looking pretty good. That's good to hear. Phil Andrews on deck with the Phillies in college football. Action News will be right back. Right now, you can find the soul of a sports car in more new Mazdas than ever. And during Mazda's Choose and Cruise sales event, for a limited time, choose from a variety of offers on a great selection of new Mazdas, including low APR financing or great cash back or special lease offers, like 0.0% limited term APR financing or up to 3,500 cash back. So no matter how you want your get to your Mazda dealer for a test drive and cruise away with great savings. Hurry, these offers end September 6th. Last week, Rick and Brian met with their Wachovia business specialist and heard about loan options for bigger office space. Tonight, they'll be back with the entire staff, celebrating their expansion in more proper fashion. Talk to a Wachovia business specialist today. Right now, ShopRite is giving new meaning to the words always for less because now your Price Plus card can save you 10% off a future shopping order. From now through September 18th, when you use your card and spend $300 at ShopRite, you'll earn a discount certificate worth 10%. That's right. Spend $300 and you'll earn a certificate worth 10% on a future order of your choice. Redeem your certificates from Sunday, September 19th through October 2nd. See store for details. Always fresh and always for less. ShopRite. Extra, extra, following bankruptcy court order. Goods Furniture is going out of business. And now through Labor Day Monday, take an extra 10% off. Already reduced total liquidation prices on absolutely everything at Goods Furniture. Extra 10% off Goods' huge inventory of famous maker living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, leather furniture, and more. Off all accessories already half price. And off all Oriental rugs already 65% off. This tremendous going out of business sale just got bigger. Don't miss extra savings on everything. Everything must go. Now through Monday only. Only at Goods Furniture. Hi, this is Pat Croce. Have you ever heard this saying, you make a living by what you get, and you make a life by what you give? Well, there's something you can do that's so easy, doesn't take a lot of time, and it can help save a life. Give blood! Visit our website to find out where you can donate. here with sports. Philly's looking mighty fine tonight down in South Philadelphia. Is this a case of a little too late? Yeah. For them? yeah not so. Why can't they be doing this all year long? Yeah, big night for the Phils as they hit their 100th homer of the season at Citizens Bank Park, leaving them one shy of their 1977 team record. Now, in addition, Corey Lytle became the first pitcher since Kurt Schilling back in 1992 to pitch back-to-back -back shutouts. Matter of fact, Lytle has not given up a run in his last 20 innings. And how's this for helping out your own cause? Bases loaded, bottom of the second, and Lila's going to do a little uh, dance floor clearing here. Three run double, make it three zip, Philadelphia. Yeah, Jason Michael scores. We now move to the bottom six. And remember that 100th homer I told you about? Here it is. Jimmy Rollins, three run shot, six zip fills. They eventually win it. Seven zip and Lila can only watch. By the way, Hurricane Francis forced a couple of postponements today down in Florida. You see the Cubs and and the Marlins game was postponed, as was Detroit and Tampa Bay. Joe Paterno kicked off his 39th season of Penn State this afternoon with a chance to pick up career victory number 340 as the Nittany Lions hosted the visiting Akron Zips in the season opener. This game taking place in the friendly confines of Beaver Stadium. And look at that, some head popping. That helmet just popped right on off. And it uh, didn't take long for the Nittany Lions to find the end zone. Tony Hunt in the hunt, 77 yards for the score. He outruns four Akron Zips there. 7-0 PSU. Then with a score of 14-3, Nittany Lions. How about quarterback Zach Mills? His first touchdown catch of his career, 13 yards from Michael Robinson. Thank you very much. So much, in fact, that Mills returns the favor, hooking up with Robinson for this score to make it 40-3. They eventually won it 48-10.
Meanwhile, Temple Owls kicking off their season against 16th ranked Virginia at Lincoln Financial Field. Already down three zip. The Owls could not stop big Wally Lundy. He'll barrel in on the side there, just getting into the end zone to make it 10 nothing Cavaliers. In all, Lundy with 104 yards rushing. As the score here makes it 17 zip, but uh, I think you get the idea. Temple well, uh, loses today in their opener, 44-14. And you always wish Temple the best, but it's wishful thinking in most times. Thank you, Phil. Sure. Baseball in Delaware today. The Wilmington Blue Rocks are closing out their regular season at Frawley Stadium this holiday weekend. Look who threw out the first pitch today. Our own Scott Palmer. Yeah, I hope That's a ball. Hang, hanging curve. By the way, the Blue Rocks <laughs> edged out the Frederick Keys, six to five. Honey, we should get that new Jaguar. Is something telling you it's time to get a Jaguar? Presenting the Unleash a Jaguar sales event. Get an X-Type 3.0 for $3.49 a month at your New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware area Jaguar retailer. Unleash one today. Something extraordinary is coming to Amico. It will change your gasoline buying experience, but it won't change your gasoline. You'll still be able to buy the same Amico gasoline you've always bought, but the environment in which you buy it will be brighter, smarter, more inviting than ever before. And the best part is, this is just the beginning. BP Beyond Petroleum. Hurry into Circuit City Sunday and Monday only for amazing specials throughout the store. Sunday and Monday only, you'll save $30 on this Sony 3.2 megapixel digital camera with three times optical zoom, just $199.99. Sunday and Monday only, take home this 27-inch TV for only $159.99. You'll find great prices on computers, televisions, music, movies, and more. Don't miss the savings. Sunday and Monday only at Circuit City. Volkswagens have tight suspension, so they take turns really well. Yeah. Watch. After you enter this turn, accelerate. Accelerate? Yeah, you'll feel the car pull you through. Okay. <laughs> See how everyone else is braking? <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you feel the control? I, I can really feel that. It's <laughs> 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 awesome. <laughs> Rain did not dampen the fun for the Medford Lakes residents at the annual canoe carnival tonight. Not rain today, of course. We're talking about the pounding rains two months ago that forced the postponement of this annual event. The 73rd annual carnival was not only pushed back to this weekend, it was moved to a different beach because of the July flooding damage. The Powerball Game Show is next on Channel 6. Action News continues at 6, 9, and noon tomorrow. For Sally Ann Mosey, Phil Andrews, the entire Action News team, I'm Rob Jennings. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Closed captioning is brought to you by Verizon Communications. This is the one sales event you've almost missed. The Ford Authorized Clearance ends Labor Day weekend. Get the year's best deal on the one SUV that's out.